Dear students, this lecture is about logarithmic functions and their applications. Let's see. Now, uh, there can be many technical definitions of logarithms, but uh, let me give you the simplest of them all. And it is surprisingly simple. It says that the sort of function that gives us the exponents which are in disguise. So, as a result of the solution of this logarithmic kind of function, we shall get output as the exponent of, from that function. We can understand that by comparing the logarithmic functions from the functions that they are made up from. Because there are basically two forms of these functions. One is the logarithmic function and the other function should be the original function from which it, is, it can be or it is devised. Now that function from which uh, the logarithmic function is made should be called as exponent form of that function or index form of the function because it is having that exponent that will appear as an answer of the logarithmic function. Now let us see that uh, with an example. Uh, as I told you that one of them should be called as index form or exponent form of the function in which you can see uh, x is in the exponent and the base is a constant that is a and it is equal to some numerical answer. Now if I try to write it in logarithmic form I have to do a little bit of jugglery and that is by putting this a which is in the base into the base of log which this log basically is representing log and just beneath it as its sub subscript we are writing this a and this x which was the exponent goes to the other side of the equality that is on the right hand side and the value on the right hand side from the index form comes to the left hand side of the logarithmic form. So it is this um, sort of jugglery or re uh, replacement of uh, values that gives us um, logarithmic form that is devised from an index form or exponent form. Now numerically we can consider a similar sort of situation. Uh, in place of a we have 10, in place of x we have 2 and in place of n we have 100. So we have taken a numerical example and we can use this formula to get the answer. And you can see we have simply substituted the values or we can do that jugglery again, you know, replacing the values from one place to another to get the logarithmic form of it. Now we can, uh, you know, we actually get the answer and you can see the exponent from the exponent or index form comes as an answer. So the output of the logarithmic function as we have seen in the definition is actually an exponent. So this is how the logarithmic functions are related with the exponential, the exponent form or the index form. Now just to make it easy for you, this is a sort of diagram or sort of flowchart that can help you to convert the index form into the logarithmic form. And this is self-evident that how the values are shifted from one place to another. For your further assistance, there is another flowchart that will help you to convert the one form into the other, that is the index form or exponent form into the logarithmic form. This is a mechanical thing that we, we should memorize actually. But this is also an important thing that how the logarithmic functions would look like. When we plot them on a graph, they appear like this. You can see it is increasing and the increase is at a decreasing rate. As we go ahead, the increase in y value is decreasing as we go ahead in the greater values of x. This is how we are representing the equation of the logarithmic function and there is a restriction and that is that we don't have a fraction in the value of a rather we have a value which is greater than 1.
and that is positive. Another more lucid example of a logarithmic growth function is as follows. As you can see, we have omitted the negative values and only first quadrant is plotted here. So this is more adjacent to the economic examples that have usually the variables which are in positive values and they occur in the first quadrant. Once we talk about logarithmic functions, we must know the laws of logarithm and uh, let us just have a recap of it if we have learned them already in at school level as well. This law one actually says that if we have a product of two values and we take the log of them, the answer is the sum of the individual logs of them. So it is the log of a product. After understanding this, we can also understand the log law of a quotient. Once we take the log of a quotient, we can get their answer by taking the difference of the logs of the individual values, where the denominator comes secondly and the numerator comes first. The log 3 deals with an exponent when there is an exponent of the value, the log of which is being calculated, that is m. The exponent comes before the log and this is how we can calculate the answer. Some other interesting results could be the log of a reciprocal value would be the negative of the log of that value. Moreover, if we take the log of 1, it is likely to become 0. So these are a few things that we can use as laws and do our calculations. This is an example from economics how the logarithmic functions can look like. You can see that there is a demand function where not just the price of it, rather the price of the other variables or uh, the goods in this case and other variables, maybe habits and income, they are also there. Now, this is nonlinear because the values of BH, the exponents, are not 1. 1 is 0 0.3, other is 0 0.5, and then again it's 3, and this is minus 1.2. So you see the power is not 1, and this is not a linear function. We can, however, transform it into linear functions by taking log on both sides. It will be called as logarithmic transformation, and the answer would be the logarithmically linearized function. And this is where the laws of logarithm will help us. The log of this value, log of 10 would be 1. And then there will be minus, which is from minus 1 over 2. So the law that was dealing with the exponent is applicable here. And these values, they were being multiplied. And here they become the sum of the individual logs of those values. So you see, this is how the nonlinear demand function can be converted into a linearized function, which is easier to understand and easier to interpret. Another example from macroeconomic theory is here. The stock prices are plotted. The above diagram is in its actual values, whereas the diagram below is logarithmic uh, set of those values. And the benefit of taking log is there that we are having a more linearized phenomenon as compared to this, which is not linearized and is having many spikes. So linear analysis is easier to, to conduct in economic situations and it is useful to take logarithm once we are dealing with values that are having variation of such kind. This is another benefit of logarithmic functions in economic theory.